Um, so hey everyone, I'm actually pretty excited to be here in person. This is my ever first in-person presentation conference after the pandemic. Uh, most of my presentation and the conference are either like pre-recorded or virtual. So very happy to be here. And uh, we are here to share you the topic about from silo to collaboration, building tooling to support distributed machine learning teams at Twitch. And I'm Shimin. Uh, I saved my introduction because I, I were already introduced. And this is my co-speaker, Chen. Hello. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Chen. Uh, yeah. Great. Um, so Chen and I are working in different uh, works about machine learning, but we actually communicate and collaborate every day closely. Thanks to the Federated Machine Learning Infra, we're going to introduce you later. Um, so here's the agenda for today. Uh, we'll first, first introduce you what is Twitch and what challenges Twitch machine learning teams are facing right now. And then Chen will be tell you a story about building feature store at Twitch and then help you understand the concept federated machine learning infra. Uh, after that, I'll be filling you the gap about what is the central piece of connecting different federated machine learning infra together. That is the answer for orchestration system, which is named conductor at Twitch. And that's the end of the presentation. Chen will give you a summary about uh, what we have covered and a high level machine learning infrastructure at Twitch, and then our future work and vision. So let's get started. What is actually Twitch? Twitch is a video live streaming company and we focus on game streaming. We have 2.5 million plus average viewership at any given moment and 1.3 trillion plus minutes watched in 2021. You can notice that Twitch is powered by machine learning almost everywhere. For example, we use uh, recommendation machine learning for content discovery and we use machine learning for fault detection and my team is safety machine learning, so we are the guardian of community health. We do machine learning to prevent chat spams or follow about detection issues. Um, in order for the machine learning teams to move very fast and be innovative and also stay close to the domain expertise of each product, our machine learning, machine learning teams actually stays within the product team. Then this actually introduced two challenges of our machine learning environment. Because every team are separated and we are working in silo. For example, um, Chen's team, they were already exploring the in-house feature store building. My team is still like trying the third party vendors for feature store. So we are using different tooling, different methodologies, and also at different stages. We do not have one central machine learning team at Twitch, which is the challenge. So the downside is very obvious. There are a lot of duplicate efforts because we are working towards the same goals, but with different methodology. And also it's very hard to collaborate because most of the toolings are inconsistent and it's very hard to find a balance. Now I'll give the talk to Chen to introduce, a, introduce you about building feature store and the federated machine learning concept. Thanks, Shireen. So yes, uh, I would like to talk about like the story of how we build the, the feature store at Twitch. And cool. So it all comes, starts from the recommendation team at Twitch. A little bit of background about the recommendation team. So it is one of the uh, earliest ML product teams at Twitch, was funded like started in 2017 by four, three or four people uh, at the company at that time. And uh, in the last several years, Twitch has grown a lot. And uh, so does the recommendation team. And it has more people now, and uh, they try to build more and more production models, and also uh, try to put recommendation on a lot of like surfaces at Twitch product. And when you see different services like the, nav the home page, left navigation, channel page at Twitch, you'll probably see a lot of recommendations powered by the service. So this brings challenges because we have more people. We, we need to our infra and tooling need to support more people to work at the same time and we need to build more models and we need to customize for more different product and experience. Um, one of the challenges that we faced in, is in working with features as we grow and working more models. And uh, one of the things here is we used to have uh, all the source of truth of features defined in SQL and uh, model Python code, basically. And basically you can find, uh, oh, if you wanted to learn what is the 
what feature does this model use? You probably need to dig into like hundreds of SQL code to understand what the feature really is. And this basically introduced a lot of like a overhead and maintenance problem. Secondly, uh, there's almost no reuse of uh, features. So we, at, the time, at that time, we used a lot of like uh, batch features for our models, which means like uh, one of the example could be uh, the user interaction feature in the last 10 weeks or several weeks. And we need to get that data, put into model training, and then try to uh, build a model out of it. And we train our model pretty frequently, like uh, every few hours. So it, you can, one thing we did for simplicity reason is we recompute all the features for every time we train the model. So it means even though there's only a few hours of new data put into the model, but we recompute everything for the last few weeks. So as you can see, this is a waste of a lot of like, compute resource and also could slow down the training, which make our, like, uh, prevent us from having more fresh models. Another point to add to this is like uh, we uh, could not reuse features across models easily. And even though we have a lot of models for in recommendation only, and a lot of the models actually share some of the features, the only way we can use the, reuse the features is copy paste the code into a new model. So pretty bad. Um, last thing is we're adding a real-time inference uh, on top of the, the offline inference that we have. So we as the recommendation grow, we wanted to have more sophistication on that. We're trying to go responsive, leverage like the real-time features so we can provide real-time experience to users and we're building like a ranking model on top of it. And in order for the ranking model to be more performant, we wanted to add more real-time features and more uh, online inference. So which require us to have a, like a request time access to features at a uh, inference time. And uh, so all those problems and think bottlenecks we try to solve and move, like motivate us to find, try to explore something like a, some solution like the feature store. So what do we want from a feature store basically? At a in, like model development, model development phase, we wanted to have like a set of features that is ready to use and that we can explore quickly, build some baseline prototype to start with. And that means like we need a high quality reusable, reusable features. And uh, doing model training, like I say, we wanted to reuse the features already computed instead of recompute everything at every time. So we wanted to have efficient access to batch training data. And inference time, of course, we wanted to be able to get the features with a really low latency so we can make the inference rec like a, a request faster and then uh, power our product decisions. So this is need a low latency feature key lookup at the inference time. And the last, uh, last but not least is we wanted to be able to build the monitoring and uh, uh, of, uh, like visibility into like a feature quality. And we wanted to know when features start to degrade or has discrepancy. So this is a get, uh, get us to this conceptual feature store uh, picture. And uh, uh, we, the, the feature store we see is a, uh, is not like a gigantic like service or something. We try to break it down into like a small components and modules and everything in the colored area is you can consider that as a part of the feature store. And we also uh, try to divide the functionality into loosely coupled but self cohesive components so they can, uh, such that it allows us to focus on the functions and specific use cases for different things and also allows us to build things incrementally. Um, I won't go too deep into the technical details because uh, <laughs> this is not the purpose of this talk, but I'll circle back of how we build the feature store a little bit later. Uh, just to recap, this is how far we have gone to build a feature store for the recommendation team. So far, nothing specific to the recommendation, right? So everything we want can be generally applicable to all uh, ML product. And, uh, at the, as a matter of fact, we also got a lot of interest from other teams, other ML teams in Twitch to say, oh, can we use your feature store? We have similar problems. And now we start to think, maybe we should let other teams use our feature store. And there are benefits of letting others using the feature store. And here we refer to this as a central feature store. So we, the idea is that we build a central feature store, we let other teams using it instead of like just the recommendation team. The benefit is uh, we can avoid duplicate effort in solving common problems, obviously, right? So 
not other team don't have to build the same feature store again or trying to different solve the problem with different solutions. We can solve their problem. They can fix all other things. Secondly, is we wanted to provide a standard way of dealing uh, in dealing with features, and uh, such that it can easily for us to build more integrations with other ML infra on top of it, so everyone else can benefit from it. Uh, lastly, it's pretty obvious we wanted to we were able to share features across teams. Even though there's a ML teams working on different domain, they actually share a lot of like a common features. For example, like a user interaction features. It could be used for recommendation, could be used for safety reasons, and or search or commerce, a lot of things. So be able to share the features will really increase the velocity for every team to start with, like use the features in different models. Um, there, there are costs, other than benefit, right? And uh, the cost here is uh, mostly come from the ownership. When we have a single feature store instance, try to power different things. It has a, because of, we need to support like so much large traffic for different use cases and the large data, it comes with a lot of like operational overhead that the owner team need to take and maintain. And uh, also because we're storing like a lot of data in feature store and also serving a lot of traffic and throughput, this could also uh, incur a really high infra cost. And, uh, a lot of the ML product team at Twitch, they're pretty separate. They're not central team. They're like in different organization. They have a, they don't share a lot of like a common reporting chain. So at the org level, uh, leaders wanted to attribute the cost from their product to the infra cost. So the be able to share the infra cost is another, another problem which I do will be facing if we use the central feature store. And thirdly, maintenance. And uh, as we're gonna run this feature store service for a long time, there are gonna be security patches we need to apply. There are compliance with the uh, security privacy or engineering uh, uh, operational excellence requirements we need to apply that need a constant work to improving the feature store service. Lastly, it might not be that obvious, but like a dependency and coordination is another, another overhead. Think about this problem like when a team wanted to add a feature to the feature store. They submit the request to the owner team, say, can we have this feature? But due to resource reason or priority reason, the owner team say, oh, we cannot do that. You have to wait. Then this could potentially slow down the product development overall, right? Which is against our will. Uh, so the cost of ownership is too much for a single product team. And just to recap again, so this is how so far as we're talking about building a central ML, a central feature store in the recommendation team to serve other teams. And if the recommendation team take the ownership of owning this feature store, then they will not have enough capacity to actually do improving recommendation. And instead they will become like a ML infra team supporting feature store only. So the problem is, so the question naturally come next is, uh, Oops, sorry. Can the cost of ownership be shared as well? So the answer is yes. If we allow each team to run their own feature store instance while keeping it easy to share features. The graph here really shows like a conceptual idea here, right? And we allow every team to run their own feature store instance. They can put their own features inside the instance. They can allow other team to use the features from their instance easily. And together, we're kind of like every team owning part of the features while using feature from other team. Together, we share that uh, all the cost while we still benefit from the uh, be able to share features and uh, uh, building single solution across teams. This is a more, a little bit more I, like uh, another graph to show the idea here, right? Like we have a three teams, which every team lives in their own AWS account. Uh, FYI, we use a. AWS uh, extensively, we're part of Amazon, in case you don't know. So uh, three teams, and every team have their infra living their own AWS account, and here team A and team B have their own feature store instance spin up in their own account, and they were gonna pay for their uh, operational overhead and infra costs from their own team, but it allows other team to use the features from their instance seamlessly. 
And here we also decouple the feature producer and the feature consumers. So feature producer is basically responsible for getting the features into the feature store and consumers is where we uh, read the features, consume features from the feature store. And on the bottom, it's another very important part, which is the uh, metadata, uh, feature metadata. I will talk a little bit more about this later. Uh, but that is a key point of enabled us um, architecture. So specifically, how does this work? Think of this as a feature manager framework instead of like a feature store service. And uh, there are going to be a single team build and maintains the infer recipe and all the relevant like client libraries, like packages and the libraries code will be owned by a single team. This is uh, not too much overhead because uh, they don't own any infra and they don't have to pay for the infra cost, operational stuff. They only basically vend the, the, the libraries in different languages. And the uh, other teams can, who wanted to use the feature store can take the recipe of the infra and copy their infra, like whole feature store infrastructure into their own account. And then they will own their feature store instance, be like oper operational responsible for that and they will also pay for the cost of and coming from infra, come from human effort and everything. And we also have a feature consumers and producers can interact with the feature store instance without any manual interventions. It all automatically happens in like the through like the metadata because the, the, all the libraries gonna be uh, interpreted that metadata automatically and automate everything. And uh, also the, all the feature metadata is centrally stored and managed and we have a service called a feature registry, which manages all the feature metadata. Because that's a metadata, it doesn't ha does not have a huge overhead of uh, uh, maintenance. And the metadata basically answers the question of where the feature is stored, what is the feature, and how do we how to access the feature. And the 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 customer of the metadata is the different client libraries. What makes this possible? So I'm going to talk a. Previously, I talked a lot about like mechanically, how do we make this possible, right? And now I'm gonna talk a little bit about like a technic technology that enables this, the enable this architecture. So we use a AWS managed services extensively. We use like a DynamoDB, Elastic Cache for storing features for online feature store. We use F3 for storing like offline feature store a lot. We use Redshift as a way to query the offline store. We use IAM to prevent authorized access to features. And there's a bunch of other things we use, actually. I didn't list all, everything, but the key point is we use a lot of managed services in AWS, so we don't have to own everything. We don't have to own everything from scratch, from the infra, hardware, et cetera. Uh, secondly, CDK. So we use CDK a lot. In case you don't know, CDK is a, reference, is a short for Cloud Development Kit. It is an open source framework developed by AWS try to uh, solve the problem of like infra as code. And uh, you probably heard about like a Terraform or CloudFormation. This is a similar thing. And, but the nice thing about CDK is it allows you to define and provision uh, infrastructure using your preferred language instead of like configura configurations like uh, Python, JavaScript, Java, anything, a lot of us support uh, in CDK. And this is the key, how we provide the recipe of infra, right? So you, we basically create recipe of infra as like packages, and then teams can take this package, run this package to spin up like the infra in their own account without like any uh, human in the loop. It just automatically create everything and wire everything. And if team using the recipe, we make sure it is spins the, the infra that can be used by um, like with other uh, component uh, libraries. Uh, lastly, we also have like this feature metadata, which is a key. We define the feature data using protobuf because it allows us to compile the, the, the definition into different languages. We use Python and Go extensively at Twitch for different purposes, like Go more for production services, Python for offline model training stuff. We need to have a single consistent uh, definition of, li uh, of, 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 of uh, sorry, a consistent way of interpreting metadata of feature so it can automatically uh, connect online and offline paths. And we'll have a single registry service to manage all the feature metadata and all the clients libraries can integrate the metadata automatically. 
And cool. This is how we build a federated feature store. I call it a federated feature store because there's no single instance. The only single centralized part is the metadata. And uh, so we were able to, to share the operational load. And the infra cost is also paid by the owning team. And the uh, only team can, because they own the feature store, they can actually add more features into their own feature store without external dependency. And we make sure a feature can be easily shared in a single standard way. So federated feature store, can we apply this federated idea to other ML infrastructures? And answer is yes. And a few character characteristics of federated ML infra that we find is, uh, firstly, it shares infra code instead of a sharing infrastructure itself. And secondly, it uses like unified protocol to connect distributed infra instance because uh, every team, there might be a lot of like a distributed instance. You have to have like a unified way of connecting them together. And lastly, you may need a central metadata. Sometimes you might know, you might not. But uh, a lot of time, central metadata will allow you to simplify a lot of like standards and uh, build a consensus without like a human in the loop. Uh, we have actually tried building this federated infra in uh, many areas. For example, we have a, like a model deployment system, and we build in house that is uh, allow team to automatically uh, deploy testing and roll out the models uh, on SageMaker endpoint. And we have a framework for processing real-time features based on Kinesis and Flink. We also build like a real-time model hosting on top of a SageMaker uh, endpoint. All those are falling into the federated infra uh, area, and we're building more of it. Um, so it looks like the federated infra solved a lot of problems for us, but there's still things it can now solve. First, firstly, unification. How do we tie all the MRI for pieces together to make sure like they can connect? They can uh, work with each other. And the, another thing is standardization. How do we make sure every team using the ML infra in the same way we want them to use? It is another problem. So I'm gonna hand this over to Shamin to talk about how we solve these two problems. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, Chen. So now I'm, give, now I'm going to give you an introduction of the Twitch machine learning or data science work attrition system. So this is actually the core piece of tying all the federated infra together and building interfaces into existing Twitch system. So um, conductor is actually just like the graph. It's conducting different machine learning pieces like uh, model deployment, model training, or data ETL. So that's conductor. Uh, what is conductor technically? Conductor is a work stream or work, work scheduling system built on Amazon Managed Airflow, which is MWAA. And it has multiple wrappers or operators or hooks or whatever you want to call it into existing Twitch ML and data system. But before diving deep into the technical detail of a conductor, let's check out what is a life before conductor. So we are having two major problems. One of it is Twitch has so many separated components. For the machine learning side, Chen's team have already built a feature store which is ready to be shared and that's going to be federated. And we are also using SageMaker, the ML, Amazon ML platform, and Twitch and Amazon also have very mature CI/CD framework. Everything is there and mature, but uh, they're separated. Um, data part is better. We have a really good data lake, which is maintained by a central data team at Twitch. And they're storing event raw data, historical data, and analytical data, and they are providing us different sinks to consume the data. For example, AWS Asina, Redshift Spectrum, and AWS Glue. So with all of the toolings in place, but separated, our data scientists or applied scientists have to have a really long learning curve to be get familiar with everything and hooking everything into their production system or even asking engineering help to unblock them. So um, now we have another problem. We do need an orchestration system. So we explore different ways. For example, we, we use Kubeflow, Fork Airflow, and Set Function inspired by Metaflow, and also the SageMaker pipeline. So all of them are working, but with some problems. Uh, maybe some of them have high V operational cost, and some of them are not customizable enough into Twitch existing system. And now we know what the missing component I'm going to talk about. 
So that's conductor. Uh, there are two whys about conductor. Uh, why conductor is a federated machine learning piece? Because no single machine learning infrastructure team is owning a conductor cluster um, which to be shared by other team. Conductor is more like a Python library or Python framework or Python project, which every team can just build in a, their own copy and maintain them. So that's the federated ML infra piece. And another why is conductor of conductor is conductor is based on airflow because uh, managed airflow, which is MWAA, solves most of the hard problems, such as operation problems, work scheduling problems, and airflow has a very big open source community. And airflow can be also very highly customizable. So leaving conductor solving the rest of a little bit easier problems, such as CICD, Twitch machine learning, or data science uh, project integrations, or specific machine learning needs, such as the deep learning container for machine learning. Uh, now I'm summarizing conductor is bringing every team and solutions together and having four major benefits. It's trying to make the machine learning flow consistent across Twitch by unifying the tooling and connecting machine learning federated pieces. And it also enables scientists self-service because scientists can almost do everything themselves. We have the pre-built components. For example, uh, we're building some feature store dumper. So scientists can just build the feature or build their data and dump into whatever the data thinks they prefer without engineering engagement. And a third benefit is uh, our conductor can actually solve the centralized operational concern by integration into existing Amazon CICD system. Uh, last but not least, Conductor has a lot of pre-built component as we just mentioned, and this is actually a good templating system to guide the scientists to use the tooling with best practices. So even though maybe you are new to Conductor or even new to Twitch, you can kind of comply to the best practices or the guidance of using Twitch system by using Conductor. Here is a production system of, of Twitch, and Conductor is mostly working on the, the ender layer part, which is the offline phase. Um, it's consuming data from data lake and also orchestrating data uh, with Redshift Spectrum with SQL and then piping data into the training job and build the offline model for batch inference and then porting the result into a key value storage. For the offline flow, Conductor will automatically deploy the model into a model cluster, which is model as a service. So Conductor plays a crucial part in our production system and orchestrate everything. This is how our scientist workflow looks like today with Conductor. They're doing research on notebooks and they are building their production code uh, after the research piece into Conductor. And when they hit the merge button into the code source control, every flow will be automatic. Uh, Conductor will do testing, validation, deployment, and it will be ready to serve the production traffic with full CICD. Uh, but there are still two challenges of Conductor. So first of all, the challenge is Scientists have to build their research code into the production conductor expected code, which is some like time consuming. Uh, I believe if we can make this re research phase to conductor phase um, in a smoother way, we can actually make the scientist life more efficient and shorten the time we deliver products into production. And another one is most of the federated machine learning piece are for general, generic machine learning use. So what if, for example, my team is building uh, safety and Chen's team is working on recommendation, we have specific domain needs. That's not a solution, there's not a solution for a federated machine learning effort right now. So how to make it compatible and plug in, uh, that's a TBD. Now, before handling the final conclusion to Chen, I'm going to quickly go over what our collaboration pattern looks like in machine learning teams at Twitch. So there are two patterns. The first one is we are going to have working group. A working group is a set of scientists or engineers who are working on the same goal, for example, building feature store. And they will be sitting down together from different teams and building a joint plan with joint efforts to the outcome. So that's a working group, it's company-wide. And another way is building libraries and bootstrapping templates. So for example, Chen just mentioned they're building a real-time streaming feature with Flink and they're, they're having the bootstrapping template. So my team can just take it and spin up with my own part of Flink similar to Chen's copy immediately without like very big learning curve. So encouraging collaboration by both working group and libraries or bootstrapping templates.
uh, I believe with all those changes with federated machine learning infra, everything is going to be better and life is going to be easier. Now I'm going back to Chen for final summary. Cool. I think we're running out of time, so I got to be quick on this uh, summary. So a few key takeaways is uh, firstly we show like there's a other alternative of building ML infra. Like uh, everything not have to be centralized. There is a decentralized uh, way of building ML infra, and it probably works better for certain like organization setup. And for example, like us, we have a pretty distributed ML product teams. And secondly, we can actually solve the culture and organization challenges using technical solutions. The culture and organization challenges are pretty hard, but that you can have smarter and work around, uh, around that using technical solutions. Uh, thirdly, adopting a single orchestration tool provides a huge leverage like Shimi mentioned. You can build a lot of like things on top of it, so it will empower every team uh, using it, adopting it. So the more team using it, the more power it brings. Lastly, I would encourage folks working in large organizations, try to break your team boundaries and collaborate, think of ways to collaborate, and this is a huge lesson we learned. Uh, this is a pretty interesting graph, uh, like how we build like uh, ML Infra Vision at Twitch, of like federated feder, feder, ML Infra Vision at Twitch actually. I won't go into details here, it's so too much here, but uh, ideally on the right side, there's a, like a white box called like a model invoker that could be any service at Twitch I uh, wanted to use the ML to product, like optimize their product experience, and we wanted to make everything on the left to be fed either federated or like a pluggable to every service, every team. So there's a, don't have to be, uh, everything don't have to be centrally owned. Uh, last slides, uh, future work. So of course we wanted to bring our, to be closer to the ML uh, architectural vision we just showed, and we wanted to First, a lot, first, more on the observability and the responsible AI side to support our community because Twitch is really focused on the community of our users. And uh, thirdly, uh, we wanted to enable self-service. A lot of the tooling we have built, have a, it's not good for self-service. We want to make sure everyone using it, every developer using it, can be productive and independent. And uh, we still have an opening. Uh, Positions at Twitch, feel free to check out and thank you. <laughs>